Okay, let's just talk smoke, fire and smoke motors. A lot of applications today, you may want to go from pneumatic to electronic. Can you replace a um, electronic motor with a, with a pneumatic motor? Yes, you can. And here is, here is basically our three lines. We have the FSLF, 350 degrees, 15 seconds. The NF, uh, 350 degrees of 15 seconds. And then the AF. This FSLF probably is 85% of the time used in retrofits. Um, a couple of nomenclature uh, items from UL. UL doesn't really certify any replacement. It's basically up to the AHA, the authorized, um, uh, I forgot the name of the uh, acronym. Um, I'll, get, I'll get back to it. But pr primarily it's either the building, building code or the fire marshal who have final say, and, and basically ordinary repairs on fire and damper, uh, smoke dampers uh, need to be fixed. So you can change uh, you, uh, Blemo motors. There is some uh, different uh, forms you need to fill out. Uh, you can get your, call your uh, industrial controls rep, and we can come in with Blemo. Um, this is a whole day's training in itself, but I just want to want to say that you can get into that business if you have customers that have failing motors or they want to go pneumatic to electronic on the uh, damp on the fire and smoke dampers please give give a uh, industrial a call the other last thing I'll just note on this is our holding amps because when they drive open they hold and they're always powered we are um, the, the lowest uh, VA in the industry and as you can see from uh, we have a VA holding on the F FSLF at 3.5 and the next lowest was 8 Let's quickly go over control signals. Everyone knows we have all different types of control signals. These are, these are the items that tell the motor what to do. So we have on, op on off, open, closed. We have three-point tri-state floating. Proportional, which is a 2 to 10 or a 0 to 10 signal with feedback. Then the other ones were uh, prioritary um, applications that uh, different manufacturers came out with, which was pulse width modulation, phase cut. These items are, are out there. Are they that popular? No. But um, they are around, and we do have abilities to um, talk to those. Multifunction technology is a Blemo exclusive. What it really allows you to do is um, be able to change any of the input signals to the, what, to the signals I just spoke about. So we have the ability to talk to anybody's control system through multifunction technology. Do you really need to use it all the time? No. We have the SRs, which are 2 to 10, or everybody would think spring return, if you guys paid attention at the beginning of the training. And, um, but MFT is, allows you to do a lot of different things um, on, on an application. So basically, I just went through the slide. Key ca other characteristics of MFT is we can actually change running time. We can have selectable feedback. So we can do volts VDC, which we, you can actually put your option in where you can program uh, 2 to 5 or however you want a volts input. Um, we have pulse width modulation available, floating point, on off, and you can also change how you want the feedback scheduled back. We also carry uh, some specialized motors for exclusive Honeywells who use a 0 to 135 ohm signal. And Barbara Coleman had the old 6 to 9 volt use and stay for control for phase cut. So how often, uh, Wes, do you see these now? Is it still pretty common out there? Well, in this screen, uh, specifically on the Barbara Coleman, I recall that when Belimo entered the valve retrofit market, that was the market that you targeted. There are Barbara Coleman motors out there and still out there and still sold new that we refer to as beer cans. They look like a large Foster's beer can. And uh, they use that 6 to 9 volts. And there's uh, complaints in the field about the fact that they have hydraulic oil in them. They leak. And this is an, uh, a very good solution. So this solution has been around on valves for at least probably seven or so years, Rob. On the, on the one above, the Honeywell Series 90, um, you know, we see a lot of the mod motors, the old square box motors. Um, so Keep in mind when you're thinking about uh, going to what might have otherwise been a $600 motor, um, you can enter the uh, 
a retrofit in the AF series for probably less than half. That's both on dampers and on valves. So, Rob, really what drives this is what's the signal controlling it. So in a retrofit situation, yes, if you're going to stay Series 90, then you need Series 90. If you're going to retrofit the thermostat, sometimes it makes more sense just to retrofit the thermostat with the motor and just go to a more modern uh, 2 to 10 volt DC. Excellent. Okay, here's basically just the control signals. And then we have the on-off. It basically power up a spring return motor and break the hot, and it'll spring closed or open, however you set it up. And on this, on the AMB side, the motor to the right, we have the uh, black and red wire always powered, and then the switch would be on the white wire. And that's why a lot of motors uh, on the non-spring, you'll see on, off, or floating, which I'll show you in the next screen. So just note that the white wire powered will always override the red wire. We have some uh, um, si signals or a computer um, Um, I can't get the word, <laughs> the, um, the uh, memory in the system that will recognize that the white wire is powered, so it's a nice way to check if your item's power drives one way without the other, you just put the white in with the red, and if it drives the other way, you know that there's something on the other side of the control signal. And here Hold on, Scott, Bob, could, okay. Bob, could you go back there a second? That's a, I checked on that myself. That's a very odd wiring diagram, but what it allows you to do is if for some reason you wound, typically if we're going to do two position, you're going to use the motor on the left. That's the AF24. But if for some reason you had, or even with a pricing issue, where you do not need spring return, but you have a thermostat that's not a three-point or floating thermostat, here you can use something like a T87. That's just two wires. And operate driving it open and driving it close. What's odd about this is, as Bob pointed out, you can put power directly on two and three, and the motor will drive in the opposite direction. The other point that I want to make on that one is that uh, normally, Rob, on a three-position motor, if the motor's running the wrong way, you switch two of the wires to make it run the other way. Well, in the case of Blimo, there's just a little uh, turn uh, directional. Yes, yeah, so you're pointing to there, and then in the same scheme, it'll just run the opposite direction. That's all I wanted to say. Cool. And here's the floating, where we just put a, a single pole double throw switch on that same motor. And, uh, and obviously, we have our proportional 2 to 10, which allows you to have feedback and uh, your control signal and obviously your power, which is the SR, or Static Regular Modulating Motor. And here, uh, on dual applications, for, for people who have been familiar with Polimo, right now on any dual application mount on either a damper or a uh, glow valve, for instance, what you want to do is set up a master slave. You don't want to parallel all the wires together. You want to take the three signal into a master and take the feedback of that master and put it into the three wire of the slave. This way, this set slave actuator will know that it's driving off a master now, so it eliminates some uh, battling talk between the two motors on a common shaft and it'll they'll run consistent. So Bob, let me stay there a second, okay. too. Mm -hmm. um, so what Bob just mentioned is that um, this is important where you have two actuators that are physically connected with one another. They're on the same shaft of a, uh, a damper or on the same shaft of a valve. Um, that's not to say, like, if you have an outdoor air damper and a return air damper it isn't necessary to slave those two together because they're not physically connected to one another. Right. So it becomes less important on, an, again, outdoor and return air, but it becomes critical when you have two motors that are, again, on the same shaft. Um, question, Bob. When you, when you send something out from the factory, a master slave, do you pre-wire those two together? No, we do not. It's two okay. separate motors. So, all right. So they would need to know to, uh, how to wire that. Okay. Correct. 